Oh yeah, new Jahar came in the mail. It's here, man. It's been it's been a long week. It's been cold out. It's been getting down to oh today it was about ten degrees. So what you're getting today is me fresh off work unboxing a fresh new harp. Inside here, there should be a Glazerin Phantom, not the mini Phantom. We're gonna try the full-size Phantom and a, I know I'm gonna butcher the pronunciation of this, a Chinese Kuzan or Kuzan. But anyways, this should be good. Go on, take a look at what's inside. <laughs> My singing's not on point today. Oh, the cold must be doing it. Do, do, do. Here we have, as always, ha, wrapped in foam. Bag's not damaged. Let's see if I can open this without damaging anything. All right, we have, this must be the Kuzan or Kuzan. I'll have to look up, I should have looked up a pronunciation, but that's not how I do things. <laughs> it, we have a wooden little, almost looks like a little wooden bottle or deformed baseball bat. And how do we open? Oh, little cork in the end here. Oh, nice. A little bit of wood dust on everything. <laughs> yeah, that's surgically clean there. We have a fan of Kujan. Now these should be about like a Dan Moy, but there's three different ones in a fan. I've never played these before, so. Not loud like like the Dan Moy, but I'm really gonna have to do some playing around with these. These are pretty new to me. Never played the Kuzan before. But let's check out this Phantom. There we have it. As always, shipped on a piece of wood, the rubber, a gray rubber band. I don't know if I've seen a gray rubber band before. piece of wood and also it's shipped with a carrying case and it's supposed to have a place right here for the magnetic bead in here. Have harp in the glazerin style with the magnetic bead, loop trigger milled out of flat stainless. Let's give it a try with the ball in. Good, good trigger stability or good read stability with that ball in. Let's go ahead and take the ball out and see how it sounds. If I can poke it out without sticking this knife into my hand. Probably not the safest way to remove the magnetic ball. Oh, there we go. Magnetic ball snaps right in the carrying case. It's good. I like that. Good read stability. The gaps are pretty tight there. A little bit of wood dust in there from the Kuzan carrying case. I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little bit of playing around with these and see how they play. Here we have the Kuzan. Comes in this little wooden carrying case, a little wooden bottle. The end comes off. Inside you'll find the Kuzan. And they look pretty similar to Dan Moy, but they're in a fan pattern. We have flat pieces of brass where the edges are curled like a Dan Moy. 
You can just hold them in a fan, and each one is a different note. Very cool. I haven't spent enough time playing these. I think this was $8 or somewhere around there as a side purchase, and I just haven't spent a ton of time playing them, but really interesting deal, like a fan of Dan Moy. And they go back in the little carrying case. That's good to keep them protected. They're, they're pretty thin brass. I wouldn't let them bounce around the other harps. Okay, let's take a look at the Glaser and Phantom. There we have flat stainless, a screwed reed with a trigger designed to hold this magnetic bead here. You can push the magnetic bead out with a pencil or ballpoint pen. It's pretty difficult to get out without something to push it out. And that will, load, that will higher the tone. It will bring the tone up without the ball in there. Then with the ball there, it adds extra weight, so it slows down the vibration of the reed and produces a lower tone and it did come with this little leather carrying case which is nice it gives you a nice place to store the magnetic bead if you can in fact get it out of there it gives you a nice place to store it the harp slides down inside there and not really much protection for your for your trigger but I, when I was on vacation, I wore this as a necklace. And I do like the fact that the carrying case comes with a place to store the magnetic bead. One thing we don't want to be doing is the, this harp is designed to be magnetic. It's designed to have a magnetic bead on it to lower the tone, just like a Masco Titan. And they're designed to be magnetic. But one thing you don't want to do... Oh, hard to get them out is to store your magnetic bead on harps not designed to be magnetic. I used to just clip them to some of my other harps. Well, don't do that. If the harp's not designed to be magnetic, you don't want to steer, you don't want to store it near magnets. You don't want to store it near magnetic harps. You can start, if your harp becomes magnetized and it's not designed to be magnetized, like these are, like some of your other harps, if they're not designed to be magnetic, and they start to become magnetic, you can start to get some weird tones out of them. So be mindful, if you have a harp like this, of where you store the magnetic ball or not to store. This whole harp is magnetic, so you don't want to store it on top of a harp that's not designed for a magnetic ball, that's not designed to be magnetic. But anyways, sermon on the magnet on magnetic harps is over. Let's take a closer look at this harp. Here we have the flat stainless, reed stainless, screws are stainless, frame stainless. Back is milled out in the in the glazerin fashion. I noticed the reed is tight. The reed and embouchure area, the gaps are tight, almost all the way back to about to about here. And when muting this harp, you got to use a lighter touch. Some of my other glazerin harps, after the after the place where the the frame contacts the mouth, it gets a little bit looser further back, and you can mute it a little bit harder. This one, you you got to mute it a little bit more carefully. Here we have the tops and bottoms of this are, have a high level of polish, but the front of this really has, it, it shows some roughness, almost a pattern. I thought, well, maybe they didn't didn't spend enough time polishing it. I, I kind of come out of the understanding that, okay, this compass, which is cheaper, has a rough finish. The Glazerin Rainbow has a little bit better fit and finish. The Star actually has a higher level of polish, the highest of all four of these. So I thought that the Phantom would come a little bit higher, higher with a higher level of polish, and it did not. It has this little bit of roughness here, and in the embouchure and reed area, we can actually see some nicks, and I'm kind of being picky, but I spent close to $80 on this harp, so I'm kind of nitpicking a little bit. My wife did make a good point. She's like, well, maybe, maybe that little bit of roughness, that little bit of pattern there, maybe that was left there on purpose. So that, that may very well be. But if it was my choice, I would prefer that they, you know, in a harp that's almost $80, I would prefer to have a polish like we have here, a high level of polish all across it. But anyways, I digress. And it is, it's shorter than a Masco Titan. Here's a Masco Titan. It's shorter than, well, the actual area that the reed is on is, makes it short, a little bit longer 
than a rainbow, but the whole harp, including that design, is a little bit shorter, and a star harp is, is quite a bit longer. If we just compare the harp itself, they're, it's quite a bit longer. But anyways, I digress. Overall, decent playing harp. So anyways, let's go ahead and let's let's give a lesson to these harps. Let's first give a lesson to this little Kuzan. Kuzan or Kuzan. I'm not sure of the pronunciation. But anyways, and I'm not great at playing this. I haven't spent a large amount of time playing. My played around with it maybe for 30 minutes but not very good at it yet i guess we hold it up in front of the lips just like a dan moy and then you move it around in front of your lips to get different tones i think i have to do some research and do some more playing around but really cool concept really cool little deal and really really cheap it is. I've seen other people playing it online and, and a lot of people will have a little holder for them, make it easier to hold and I think that would that would definitely be beneficial. But anyways, we'll put that away. That was a side purchase and really affordable. Here we have the holder for it. Turns out it's about like a necklace. But anyways, let's go ahead and let's get a look at it compare the phantom with the ball in. Start at the top, we'll come down. And with the ball out, this harp really does respond well to deep hollow sounds to you know, modulating the shape of your throat. But anyways, with the ball out. Has that glass rim, outer spacey metallic sound. Decent range out of it. Let's go ahead and we'll compare it to Masco Titan, another harp with a ball, a magnetic ball in it. And that train, <laughs> but anyways, that's that's the way it goes. We have a train going right now. A little bit bigger range on a Titan with the ball in. Here's with the ball out. A little bit louder too. Yeah, let's go ahead and let's give it a run through with the ball in. Uh, if I can get it out, these magnetic beads sometimes able to get out. Let's go ahead and give it some breath, breathing, and percussive noises. <laughs> the ball out and with commentary from the neighborhood train. Pretty pretty decent overall. Comparable to well probably to the Glazerin star in sensitivity and also to volume. Maybe a little bit extra volume out of here. Star, I think, does a little bit better breathing. Let's go ahead and give the Masco Titan a try with the magnetic ball in. A little bit lower in tone, lower in volume as well. Get the ball out. 
what is really in there. tone much longer of a read a little bit the read stability isn't quite as good on this because the reads longer but a little bit better with the muting let's go ahead and let's run through some muting with these harps <laughs> this one this harp if you like doing a lot of muting this harp it's a lot harder to mute let's go ahead and we'll try muting the masco titan a lot better muting out of it. That long read really responds well with muting. So does the Glazerin Star. Overall, I think I like the Glazerin Star a little bit better. It doesn't have the magnetic bead, has a little bit better fit and finish, but the Phantom, even though it's more expensive, doesn't have quite as nice as a fit and finish. It does have two different tones we get out of it. It is a, it is a decent harp. It plays, all the Glazerin harps play very, very similarly because they're similarly designed. Flat front, mill down on the back, this one just has the added benefit of a magnetic ball. So overall, if I was going to rate this harp, I think I gave the Glazerin Star like an 85 out of 100. I'd probably give this one an 80, maybe 82 out of 100. Reason being is not that it, this harp plays pretty well. It doesn't respond as well to breath and breathing as some of our other harps, but good sensitivity, good range, good volume and also the two tones, but I'm gonna take a little bit off the score for it because the value in this harp's not as high. This harp is like 80 bucks, and for some reason, this is just my opinion, I like the Glazerin Star better. There are harps in the 20 to $50 range that I enjoy a little bit more, but this harp, overall, this harp does very well. I'm just gonna keep the score a little bit lower because at 80 bucks, you're not getting a huge value. You are getting the added advantage of having two different tones out of a harp, or two different notes, I don't think it would be notes, but two different tones out of the harp because of the magnetic ball, but fit and finish isn't quite what I would expect out of an $80 harp. And also, it for 10 extra dollars more than a Glazerin Star, you don't get a whole lot more. Not really increased sensitivity, not quite as fun to play. I like playing the Star a little bit more, but these Glazerin harps, especially this higher dollar one and this one, they do respond really well to minor percussive noises, throat noises, the deep hollow sounds. So overall, very decent harp, just not a huge value for the money. You, my opinion, you could spend 30 bucks. <laughs> And you can have a very, very decent playing harp that plays, in my opinion, as well as the Phantom, but doesn't have a magnetic bead, not made out of stainless. The good thing about Glazerin harps is they're not going to rust. Um, I haven't really tested them. I haven't left them outside yet or anything to test their rust resistance, but overall, I've, I've neglected cleaning them and no signs and no rust. So overall... 83 out of 100, or maybe I said 82, but 83 out of 100, very decent harp. Well, that's going to be it for this unboxing. Like, share, and subscribe for more Harpery. Harp out.